guys, Lone here, and this week's video is going to be a tutorial slash walkthrough on how to blend large areas. Now, since my collaboration with Nyrell Busby, I have been requested by a few different people to kind of go over how to blend large areas because this seems to be a thing that a lot of marker artists tend to struggle with. So I figured since this is a very quick thing for me to do, I would go ahead and do it. So the first thing you're going to need um, is colors of a varying shade. Now because I'm going to just repeat the nighttime starry night thing, um, <laughs> I have just decided to choose a bunch of different blues and if you look they go essentially lighter to darker. Um, you can do this with any type of marker, doesn't matter if it's Prismacolor, Marvi Uchida's brand, um, Copics like I'm using or even Sharpies. Just as long as you get a varying degree of different shades, I would say just for myself. Um, have a minimum of five different shades that you can blend together from lightest to darkest, at least in this process that I'm about to show you. Um, on the side here, we have just the yellows for the stars because why not? We're going all the way with this. And then as a kind of backup side view or backup thing, I guess you could say. Make sure you have a white gel pen and if things ultimately go wrong, get yourself some rubbing alcohol, at least for the night sky. Um, I would not recommend this if you are trying to blend large areas of grass or like a daytime sky, but for a nighttime sky, you get a bit of leeway when trying to blend everything together because you can use the rubbing alcohol for what I'm about to show you to create a very nifty effect. Now the paper I'm using for this tutorial is the Canson XL Mixed Media Paper. It is the paper that I am more most comfortable using for Nyrell's picture. I use the Explicit Blending cardstock. So just as a precautionary, um, especially with the XL Mixed Media, I would recommend also having like a scrap piece of paper underneath, preferably from the same brand, just to make sure that it catches any kind of excess marker. Now, I don't have that here because as you can see, I have a nice lovely mat that's going to keep my newly clean desk hopefully marker free for a little bit. So, yeah. Um, one final disclaimer, this is just the process of how I do big and large area, like larger areas. So do not consider this a go-to for, you know, everything. Um, if th there are tons of different ways on how to do this, you can always look them up here on YouTube or even online. Um, you can learn to do with other mediums as well. So just look around. Don't don't see mine as like a definite go-to marker, large area thing, <laughs> large area thing. That's nice. Large area tutorial. So I hope that I'm able to teach some of you something. I don't I don't know. So I just hope that you guys enjoy this video as I show you how to do large areas. So, without further ado, let us begin. Okay, now for myself, as you see here, there are a bunch of stars. Um, that's just simply to help break it up for myself because I don't like doing one huge paper full of just a gradient effect. And, I don't know, it just makes it a little easier for me. So, what you essentially want to do is take your lightest blue color for this. Uh, 
tutorial because I'm using Copics. I'm using B16, aka Cyanine Blue. I'm hoping I pronounced that right. And what you want to do is envision a, like a circle around the star where no marker will go into that circle. So there'll be a circle here in my head, 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 here and here. Um, if I don't need um, to mark it down or anything like that because I just, I find it more natural just to kind of go at it rather loosely. So what you want to do is just go in circles, small circles, because it'll help blend it better. If you go in small, quick circles around the star in question, and you just want to do this for all your little stars or all, if you have a reflective item in your picture. Now, if you don't, you want to go around it. So, or you don't want to, like, if you don't, you don't need to do this. This is just simply for a night sky. So, we're going to leave a little bit of space around the stars to give it a bit of a light source type of deal. Um, it also helps if your markers are really, really juicy. Um, so if you are not sure if your markers will stand up to this, I would recommend getting either a backup marker if you have Sharpies, or make sure you have rubbing alcohol for Prismacolors or any other typical marker that can take rubbing alcohol. Or like with Copics, you want to make sure you have the refill. So I don't, but then again, I don't use these colors very often. So except for maybe my B90s. So we're just going to quickly do this. You want to try to work fast because that is one of the keys to actually getting this to blend rather nicely. And then I'm going to move these aside just to get them out of the way. And you're gonna to want to put that to the side, and you want to go, and then you want to go to your next blue. Like I said, you want to work rather quickly. If you're not able to, don't be completely terribly concerned because what I'm about to show you, once I lay down this lovely B18, aka Lapras Lazuli. I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce these names. Um, it'll help blend the colors together very well. So you just wanna go round and round and round and round and around. And it also helps, especially if you have uh, chisel tips, because as those with chisel tips know, um, it is very hard to blend once the colors have essentially started to dry out. So I'm just going to hurry this up and hopefully this won't be too horrible to come together. So yeah, you just want to just go in circles because that is the best way to get an even blend, at least for large areas like this, at least for me anyway. Like I said, there are tons and tons and tons of different ways to do this, and you can always find a tutorial on YouTube that you may be more comfortable with, so go ahead and use that. No, no, no complaints coming from, from me, because I understand that not everybody's going to learn the same way. Now you want to grab your B16 again, or your lightest blue. And right at the range where the two shades meet, you kind of just want to go around and just blend that together a little more. Well, and this is why it's good to work fast, but like I said, if you can't work fast because you're a slow artist or a slow color colorer, 
color race, I don't know, if you're slow at coloring like myself, um, it just, it helps blend everything together. And it also kind of shows why you kind of need a really juicy marker or at least standbys for your marker to make sure that the coloring can go off without a hitch. And as you can see, once again, going in circles. It's a bunch of going in circles. It really, really is. And after a while, it can be a little fun if you look at it in a fun kind of light. So now that we are we're done with the B16, so that's going to the back. So once again, you want to go with your next darkest color. And once again, instead of going around completely in the circle, as you see here, these two little areas met. That's okay. That's perfectly fine. Um, and instead of actually making them meet, unless you want to do that, that is completely fine. Um, I personally don't. So I just kind of go around and around and around. <laughs> Seriously, this is all just going in circles and it's just, yeah. As you can see, once again, going around in circles. <laughs> um, yeah. But, uh, I don't know, like, for the longest time, for myself at least, I had a huge problem actually doing large areas of color because it was just like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> and I didn't quite understand how to get the colors to blend very well. And whatnot, so... It, it, this was a very difficult thing for me to kind of grasp. And then one day, I just kind of got it. Um, I don't know. It just kind of clicked in my head. And I gained 10 XP in art experience. <laughs> so, yeah, as you can see, um, it's just simply going around in circles. And once again, in order to help blend it a little bit better... You want to go around here with your last color that you used where the two colors meet and just go around. So that's simply how it's done. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, once I finish this circle up for the lovely star here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, speed it up because... Um, it's pretty much self-explanatory at this point. So let me go ahead and speed this up so you guys don't have to sit here and watch me blend all of this in real time. So let me go ahead and do that. So as you can probably see, um, my nib fell off on my other end, hence why it's white. Um, I'm finishing this up real quick with the chisel tip, so you can kind of see that yes, it is possible, but it's going to be sli done slightly different, but that's okay. Um, I'm used to it, and also i got to let this sit for a few minutes to let it soak into the nib, um, yeah, but because you're under some kind of time restraint, because that's how we roll, um, yeah, so... I'm going to go back to blending this like a crazy person and let this soak and uh, take on ink. So, woohoo! Okay, so once you get it blended out the way that you want it blended out, go ahead and color in the stars 
with your two yellows and uh, I typically use my lighter yellow to actually give the outside of the star and then use a darker shade to color the inside and then once that is done just kind of go for me personally I like to use rubbing alcohol to make nifty little effects however my eyedropper decided to spill this everywhere and my lighting system has not made this extremely easy for me to do so I had to do this separately so once this has dried, if you guys decide to put down rubbing alcohol for the nifty effect of letting colors show through from the underneath, um, what I typically do is then put down white gel pen. Once again, my lighting system here is being a bit of an annoyance and not allowing me to actually show you guys how this is done. So. It's just a very simple process of putting down rubbing alcohol dots, letting that dry, and then putting down where you want your stars to be. So um, that's pretty much how it's done. I hope that you guys learned something from this tutorial walkthrough thing. And um, hopefully, um, I hope you guys enjoyed. So I'll see you in the next video and hopefully... This next walkthrough will not go nearly as bad. So, see you guys later. Bye-bye. Of my Copics. So, my heart is hammering. So, we're gonna, going to attempt this. Hopefully, I'm able to keep this all in frame. Because God knows if I can or can't. And, jeez, this is just really weird. So... It's a stick it in front of